Welcome, my name is Nick, and this is Nick's Fort, and today I'm gonna to share with you guys some of my favorite color grading tips. These tips are super powerful, and some of them are almost like mini tutorials, but most of them are quick tips, and they're gonna allow you to have more control when you're color grading, and they're also going to speed up your color grading process, so get stoked. If you're new here, I do filmmaking tutorials, and I help people learn how to be successful freelance creators, so if you dig it, you can subscribe below. Also, before we start, if you're interested in more color grading tutorials, I'll link below to a playlist that I've created of color grading tutorials that I've made, and they do range in skill level. There's probably something for everyone in there. So the first tip is using multiple Lumetri color layers on a single clip. In the past, you might have put your clip down on the timeline and used adjustment layers, and each adjustment layer might have its own Lumetri color effect on it, and that's how you might have worked. We're not gonna do that anymore. We're actually gonna go directly on our clip. We're gonna put multiple Lumetris on there, and they're all gonna work together. First, I'm gonna show you this in the effects controller. You can see that we have three Lumetri colors on this single clip selected. We have a grass layer, we have a reds layer, and we have a base correction layer. And each one of those is its own independent Lumetri color effect. So if we go over to our Lumetri color panel, we can look at how this changes. We have our three layers of Lumetri color here. If I hit add Lumetri color effect, it's going to add a new layer. And then if I hit rename, it's gonna allow me to rename that. And let's rename this highlight work. So now I have an additional layer. So we still have our old layers in here and we have this new one. I'm gonna dump the highlights way down and I'm going to boost my whites. So now that I did that, I can switch to base correction and you can see that the work on base correction is still here and is different from this layer. So you have multiple layers on the single clip. And if I toggle this off, you can see the change that we've made and we actually don't like that change. So we're gonna go down to clear and it's gonna delete that one that was selected, which was the highlight work. And now we just have the remaining layers that we had previously. You can toggle each one of these on and off and you can see how it affects the image. We can see the effect on the grass on that one. And then the reds, we can see the effect in the mountains and on the sand as we toggle this on and off. Using multiple Lumetri layers on a single clip can be really, really nice and powerful. Just make sure that you don't get confused as to which one you're on. So let's say that I wanna be on base correction, but I'm actually on reds and I start, you know, mucking with this stuff. It's not gonna affect this one. See, the exposure is still the same here. So you wanna make sure that whatever layer you're on is the layer that you're trying to be on and trying to make changes to. This next tip is a huge game changer. What this tip is, is being able to make a universal color correction to a clip that color corrects the clip in every instance of your edit versus a singular correction to a single clip on a timeline. And if you know what I'm talking about by just hearing me, you're freaking amped. And if you don't, I'm going to demonstrate it and it's going to make way more sense and then you're going to be freaking amped. So we have our clip here. And if I go over to Lemetri, we'll see that we have two layers. We have a blue mask, which is removing a lot of the blue in the image. And then we have our base correction, just making that base correction to the image. And if you look up here, there's two tabs. And this is where the magic happens. This is the actual sequence name that we're working on. So if we go over here, we see Surf Iceland Final. That's the name of this sequence. And this is the name of that sequence. And we're working on this clip in this sequence. If I click on this tab right here that says master DGI 007.mov, that is the name of this clip. And that's the master effects on this clip. So let's go back to our timeline here. And I'm gonna go over to my effects control. I'm gonna take my Lumetri colors. I'm gonna select both of them. I'm gonna cut, they're gone. I'm gonna to go to the to the master clip here. I'm gonna to go to my effects controls. I'm gonna hit paste. I'm gonna paste them and you can see the image is back to how it was with the color correction. And now that, by doing that, putting it on the master, it's gonna affect every single instance of this clip in our edit everywhere. So you can do a correction on a clip 
and it's gonna happen on all of the clips everywhere in your edit. So freaking awesome. To demonstrate, I'm gonna show you another instance of this clip in this timeline, and you're gonna see that the same effect, and, and to make it uh, obvious, we're gonna make this a little more dramatic. We're gonna go super blue, and then we're gonna go super purple. And we're gonna make it look funky. So this is on the master clip. So every instance of this clip, this is gonna look, the clip's gonna look like this. So to demonstrate this, I'm actually just gonna go right click, reveal in project. I'm gonna find that clip. I'm gonna open it up in my source. Now it's in my source and you can see in my source, it's, it's purple as hell, just like we made it. And so if I, if I on my timeline, so go to the end of the edit, I wanna put a new instance of this clip down, right? So I do in, out, and then I take that clip and I drop it down. Look, look how purple that is. And that's because of what we just did. Now let's say I don't want this crazy purple look anymore. I actually want it to be a little different. I'm gonna go to the master tab again right here. And inside of that, we can see that we have both of our corrections that we did earlier. We have this crazy look we did. And let's go the other way. Let's go the extreme other way with the look. Wow. So now we have this funky dunky green vibe and i like that better i like that so much better it looks super cool um i'm kidding and so this clip that we did this effect to we did it on the master tab right so if we go back to where we were in our edit earlier and we go to this clip that we were working on earlier what do you know it's green because we affected the master the master affects all instances of the clip. And one more note on this. If you want to make a change to this clip and not the other clip, all you have to do is be on your timeline tab up top. So let's say this one, we like the green look, but it's just a little too dark because it's, it's just not bright enough in this part of the film. So let's boost it super high. And then if we go to our other instance of this, that one is still darker than the, the one that we just adjusted because we did the adjustment on our other clip, not on the master. We just did this extreme stuff as an example to illustrate this tool. And I would definitely not do that to my footage unless I was doing that on purpose for some crazy reason. But this, master tab up here and affecting the master clip is so useful especially for interviews because you can just do your grade on the interview for for the person that you're doing an interview with and then every single instance on your timeline of that clip of that interview is done it just makes it so fast it's an it's amazing it's an amazing way to color grade and again just be really careful as to which one you're affecting and don't get confused between each one and, and just really pay attention because if you start thinking you're on the master and you're not or vice versa, if you're on the master and you think you're on an individual clip, it can really uh, be a little mind whip. All right, so tip number three is gonna be a little bit more of a quasi mini tutorial. So we're going to look at this clip here with this individual standing in his yellow coat. And I am actually gonna go up here and I'm gonna make a new Lumetri effects, and I'm gonna rename it Coat Funk. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go down to our curves, and we're gonna pop open the hue saturation curves. And for all of these, you have hue versus saturation, hue versus hue. This versus right here is not really a good representation of what's happening. It's more of a effects or controls. So these are all really powerful. I'm gonna demonstrate a few examples of how to use this. And the first one's gonna be, let's say we wanna change the color of this gentleman's coat. So I'm gonna take this dropper, I'm gonna get a little sample of the color of the coat, and then hue versus hue. Hue is, is more or less color. So color affects color. So we've selected the yellow color. Now if I pull this, you can see a color spectrum shooting up and down on this point. If I move it up, we're gonna start changing it to red. And he's ready for the club all the way up to like this funky purple. And if we go the other way, we're gonna start hitting green. He's ready for the club, even more. I think that's like more of a club look. Oh, welcome to the club. 
Wow, look at that too. We're gonna go with that. That looks really good. And then if you wanna expand the range in which it's affecting. So the range that it affects is where you have your dots. So if I slide this to the right, it's gonna start, see how it's affecting the background. So now he's really in like this club atmosphere. atmosphere. And you can really push your image in a very specific direction using these tools. And this is just the hue versus hue. I'm gonna reset that, double click in here, resets it. I'll do one more example. So we're gonna look at hue versus luma. And again, hue affects luma. So we're going to select the green in this grass. And let's say we wanted to make that green in this grass a little bit brighter. If I go over here and I click the center dot and I bring it up, it's gonna start making it brighter. And I'm gonna do it extreme here. See how bright it's getting? And then you can go the other way. You can make it darker by bringing it down again extreme let's say i did that i wanted to make it brighter but i wanted to pick up a little bit more of you know the yellows in the hill so if i slide this dot over we're going to start hitting those yellows in the hill and again if i want to make this extreme see how in the hill we're getting super bright so it's a good way to isolate something specific in your image and make a change specifically to that so in this instance we wanted to make all of our hillside and greens brighter and we used hue versus luma. And you can also set your parameters yourself by clicking on here. And again, if we wanted to, to take a guess, we can adjust it just like that. The eyedropper works best. Double click, resets it. Awesome. All right, for the next tip, we're going to dig into the HSL secondary. On this clip, we have two Lumetri layers. I'm going to turn off the iceberg one. And as you can see, that affects the color of the ice. And so I'm gonna show you how we did that. So I'm gonna make a new one. And I'm gonna rename this to be Iceberg 2. And so what we're gonna do in Iceberg 2 is in our HSL secondary, we're gonna isolate the color of the iceberg. And we can do that by taking this eyedropper and clicking on it and that's going to select the color that we clicked on and if i hit color gray it'll showcase just that color and if i drag this around it's going to move based on the color spectrum below so maybe i want to expand it a little if i click on the top here it'll expand it i can pick up a little bit more of that color and then down here is your saturation so it's going to select it based on saturation so more saturated to the right, less saturated to the left. So as you move this, it's gonna pick it up based on the saturation. So usually I'm gonna slide this around to get it in a spot that I like, and then I'm usually gonna expand it and then pull it back. I don't wanna pick up his surfboard. And then you can feather these too. And get a little bit more that way. And then the luminance with the L down here. So if I slide this one direction, the other direction, it's gonna shift what we're getting. I'm gonna expand it. And I think we're picking up a little, little bit of the water here. That's okay though. I think that's pretty good. So the color gray is gonna show you what you're excluding. The gray part is excluded from your mask and what everything else you see is not. So always gonna put some denoise on. I'm just gonna do six and you're always gonna put blur on. If I do the color gray again, you can see that's going to allow the mask to have some smoother edges. If you see that around his body here, if you don't do this, if you don't do the blur, I'm going to do extreme for you so you can see how it blurs the edges. If you don't do that, sometimes you're going to get some crazy pixels in your color grade and it's going to look like trash. So always do this. And then now we're going to refine the look of the glacier chunks in the water. So if we go down here, we can change the color and I'm gonna do an extreme change. I'm gonna run it up in the reds, see how red it's getting. And that's just affecting what we've selected. So what we did in this instance on the grade originally, if I double click in the middle and reset it, is we made them a little bit more green and teal. And then if you go over to this slider, it'll increase the luminosity, the luminance. So it's gonna make it brighter if you move it up, see how bright they're getting. If you move it down, it's gonna make them darker, your selection darker. And you can also do all these parameters below and that can affect everything in that mask. So now if I toggle this on and off, 
we can see that we've changed the look and the color of the icebergs and nothing else. So the HSL secondary section of the Lumetri color panel is super powerful. In this example, if I color gray, you can see we selected his skin and it looks like we brought up the luminance of his skin just a little bit. And if I toggle this on and off on the right, you can see his face gets brighter. And you can just do these little adjustments and it's gonna happen throughout the clip. So we're still getting his face in that spot. If we go to the front of the clip, getting his face there. Wow, look how freaking crazy this iceberg looks. Looks like a dinosaur. The last tip is going to be how to add your own LUTs into the look area here. So as I drop this down, you can see I have all these LUTs on the top. These are all my own LUTs. And forever I had no idea how to add them here. And it was super frustrating because I would have to go to browse and then I'd have to go through here and I'd have to find my LUTs every single time versus now I can just drop my LUTs in and see how they affect things and see how they look. And they look dope by the way, which if you want to check out my LUTs, they are on nixfort.com and you can buy them there and you can load them in here if you want. Let's undo that. And so we have this base correction on this image. And let's say we love that, right? We've done this work, we've done the color grade, and we and we like this. So we're gonna save this LUT, export cube, and we're gonna name it Night Shot. Now that we've saved Night Shot, we're going to add it to our LUTs. You wanna navigate in Explorer or Finder if you're on a Mac to where you save your LUTs and you're gonna find that LUT, there it is, Night Shot. And then you're gonna navigate to the common area and under the common area in Adobe, and I'll, I'll link below to a guide from Adobe that shows you where to go. On a Mac, it's gonna be different and on a PC, it's just, a, it's nice to know, check out the link. And you're gonna to go to LUTs and then inside of here you have Creative and Technical. If you put it in creative, you're going to have your LUT show up here under creative. If you put it in technical, you're gonna have it show up right here, input LUT, it's gonna be under technical. So we're gonna take night shot and we're gonna dump it into creative and we're gonna hit okay. And then we're gonna restart our system. We're back in our edit now and we have this other clip selected. I'm going to go over to creative. I'm going to drop down. I'm going to go down to night shot. Boom, night shot's on, toggle it on and off. It worked. It looks like this shot. And now we have our LUT that we created in our drop down menu. And if you didn't know how to do this, you should be freaking stoked because it's so frustrating when you don't have your LUTs in here and you have to go through the process of browsing. And now you don't have to. So that's freaking awesome. If you found this helpful, please share it with someone else who you think will find it helpful. Share the love. Also give that thumbs up a click, drop a comment, subscribe, notifications, all that good stuff. But most importantly, get out there, put this into your workflow, implement it, and don't stop creating. Peace.